Hey guys, what is going on? Redmash here, and welcome back to Cards and Castle, where today patch notes have been officially released uh, for a late summer update coming into the game, hopefully very soon. No official release date has been mentioned at this time, uh, but these patch, uh, patch notes were released late last night, um, when it has certainly got the community buzzing about what's potentially going to be new problems coming into the game, and some solutions to current deck problems that we see so with that being said let's take a look at what we got uh, for us in store uh, going into late summer early fall so the first thing to take note of is our nerfs now there are pretty much three big nerfs that i think are going to be the highlight of this patch and those uh those nerfs excuse me are of course arbiter's return Unholy Altar and War Party. We'll get to War Party a bit later because there is something else I want to tie into a War Party discussion. So first we'll handle the Unholy Altar. Oh boy. So, <laughs> the Unholy Altar of course has been cost increased to 3 and is now a Warlock card. Now this tack, well the latter half tackles one of the major issues um, that Altar has been causing and that is being an auto include in nearly every deck due to how powerful it is that uh, un the only neutral spawner in the game capable of spawning two two zombies every turn um, is something to be concerned about especially when o the only sort of hard removal for that can be found in um, warlocks and of course a hard removal in this case being more direct damage rather than just like murder or murder or execution um, so that's kind of what I mean there. Um, in regards to the usage of it, I think the cost increase to three is okay. Um, three gold is a critical point in the early stages of a matchup, so to play an unholy altar is taking a slight risk there. Um, if it, you are running, uh, the, excuse me, if you are running an undead deck, this change doesn't really affect you. I think you have to be more careful at how you play altar now, and maybe if you want to do some number adjustments, you can. Um, but for those of you who aren't really running Warlocks and you've, you know, thrown Altar into a couple decks, you're definitely going to have to find something to fill that void for an Unholy Altar. Uh, there are still a lot of choices out there, though, so I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a huge loss for those decks. But it is something just very important to take note of, uh, that Altar has been changed to the point where, alright, I can't use it in every deck, so I need to find something else to fill that gap. Um... I think it will, again, still be somewhat relevant in Undead and Warlock decks. Um, maybe a bit less uh, than what we currently see on today's ladder, but I think Unholy Altar, um, th the nerf was good nonetheless. It does factionize the card, um, which is you know very much needed. And cost increasing it to 3 does put it at you know sort of a more risky area of play do i want to play this and waste three gold to start spawning zombies when it could get destroyed or should i want to play something else do i want to do uh, something differently so that is something to take note of for the unholy altar again i think this is a pretty good nerf the next change i want to talk about is the arbiter's return next now the arbiter's return has been a again an interesting card um i don't think it's nearly on the auto include level as unholy altar has been uh, for those of you who are running Crusader decks, you'll probably be running at least two Arbiter's Returns in those decks. Um, now, originally there was a lot of backlash to, I think, Arbiter's Return being cost increased to 8 gold. Um, as of now, uh, people are about, you know pretty mixed about it, I would say. Um, and that's kind of for two reasons. One, the card itself has not really been changed. There's no alteration all other than the cost. So you're still getting the heals. You're still getting the judge summon and whatnot. Uh, so I think people are a little conflicted that you can just create that 14 health gap uh, between you and your opponent all by playing one card. But on the other side, you will have to take, you know, an extra turn to set this combo up, which, you know... A turn could mean everything, you know, you might not get that extra turn to play Arbiter's Return, so I think that's something to take note of. Um, cost increasing it to 8, usually people who, you know, play on the red side use their metal at this point, um, so they're not going to have that extra metal to coin out to a, you know, a, what we call a normal Arbiter's Return in, you know, what we see today. Uh, that being, of course, playing at the 7 gold standard, um, but... 
I think an 8 gold is also a very smart move because now we can avoid uh, those cheeky Arbiter detonation combos. Those, I don't think were officially, like, you know, mentioned that, oh, this is a, you know, legitimate interaction or whatnot. Uh, but Arbiter Turn being placed at 8 gold does certainly put a halt to that. Uh, the only way you can pull this off now is if you actually keep the medal for the entire game uh, up to about the 10 gold slot and then using that medal uh, to Arbiter and detonate. But by that point, you are risking a lot on that. Um, it's a whole, I think, it's a, it's a turn earlier, or a turn later, excuse me, um, to play that combo. And again, like I mentioned, the turn uh, being one more, uh, could ultimately mean the end of your game because you might not get that extra turn depending on what's currently at your face So that is again something to take note of um, While the change isn't as strong on paper, you know, it may not seem strong on paper uh, I think it's going to be one that's helpful in limiting the arbiter's return um, Not killing it completely, but definitely limiting it to what you know from what we see in its current state now the next card I want to talk about is War Party. Now I kind of saved War Party to conjoin it with uh, Frozen Storm because I felt like both of these two cards uh, pretty much go hand in hand in both decks and you know their nerf reasons, uh, if that kind of makes sense. So War Party of course now requires the player to discard a card at random as part of its cost and they do throw in a note there, this card's effect has not effectively been counterbalanced by giving free units to your opponent and has ended up a bit more powerful than we'd like. This obviously makes sense due to the fact that War Party decks focus more on stalling in game and then ultimately throwing out a War Party to rush about six or seven big guys out on the board at once. Meanwhile, your opponent might be only working with about two extra units that they may have not thrown out plus what they did for their turn. So it's kind of, you know, they're in a situation where, listen, I don't think um, War Party was pretty much effective in giving the opponent free units because what's going to win? Seven sort of big monster units or, you know, someone else's board, plus maybe like two or three more guys, much weaker than what the opponent, you know, what the w War Party user might have. Um, so they also throw in requiring the player to discard at some additional risk. This obviously makes sense. Uh, War Party players hate to discard. It's kind of not what they want to do. Um, anything that they lose from their stall to their big guy to another War Party, anything can be a loss for them. So having that discard definitely gives uh, War Party players more of a concern to work with. And this can also be tied into Frozen Storm as well. As you can see, the cost reduced to 5 gold, um, but it also, again, requires the player to discard a card. Uh, they, f they threw in that we felt that a stall this powerful should require the stalling player to give up some long-term resource advantage in exchange. Obviously, going back to the whole War Party discussion, um, they... Again, they don't like to discard. War Party don't like to discard. So, it, again, it kind of harps on that weakness. And they recognize that, listen, we understand that a lot of what's been going on now, uh, or at least the War Party deck, where the War Party is concerned, uh, they understand that stalling is a big part in it. So they actually hit their biggest tool for stalling, and that's Frozen Storm. Now, meanwhile, it's getting reduced to 5 gold. Um... Again, it's going to force that discard to happen. So think about using a Frozen Storm on top of a Frozen Storm on top of a maybe War Party. Uh, you just lost three cards right there from the discard, which you wouldn't if, you know, if you're playing in the current day. Um, but in the future, you don't know if you're going to be running, you know, you don't want to lose that many cards, especially in a War Party deck. So I think this was a good change. It hits both the stalling tool, the biggest stalling tool, I should say, and the War Party itself. So, I, I, people are saying War Party is killed off. I don't, I mean, they've been hit, I think, pretty much the, you know, they've been hit very hard, I think, um, in this patch. But hopefully they'll try to find a way to survive. The discards definitely hurt them. Uh, but me being who I am, I hated the War Party deck, so I'm all for this change. So, um, yeah, I think we should probably, though, move on because there are some interesting buffs to take note of as well. Now, along with some of the nerfs that have been thrown into this patch, we've actually received a lot of different buffs. Now, there are more, you know, there is more to this list. Uh, I'm currently over about like the top image though. I'm kind of using screenshots uh, rather than the actual browser. Um, so I will bring those other buffs up in a minute. But I want to talk about some of the buffs that are going on up here. 
Um, obviously, there are a bunch of other nerfs that I think I'm going to gloss over for now. Uh, some not being too impactful. Um, obviously, some being like Flamestorm and Witch Doctor. Those definitely hurt their respective faction or their respective decks and even Voyager as well. Um, but I think we should focus on some of the other things that have been buffed as a result of some of this change going on. Um, and the first one, Dojo of Awakening. Now, as you can see, the Dojo has been renamed to Sleeping Dojo and is sort of being morphed into this draw engine for the Awakened deck. Now, we've barely seen Awakened decks in this current day and age uh, because they're too slow and they pretty much get beat down because they don't have enough cards to support them. Uh, well, not not like that. I mean, they, they have been missing a draw engine. It's kind of what I'm trying to get at here. I was going to try and make something long and elaborate, but what I'm going to try and say here is that they've needed a draw engine, so this definitely helps them. Again, another developer's note, the previous ability here simply made Awakened combos give more stat presence, which was generally not needed for them. Changing this to a card generating engine helps cover a critical weakness of the Awakened decks and should make the archetype more viable. I definitely agree with this statement. Um, we've barely seen uh, any sort of Awakened takeoff recently. Uh, due to that fact, every other deck out there has some form of draw that's able to keep them alive in the game. Uh, Awaken, once they kind of run out of their cards, they're, you know, relying on the draw, and that already is kind of killing them. Because they're not an immediate faction, they do take time. The Awaken aspect of Awaken decks uh, forces them to wait a turn before things start to really kick in for them. Um, so, them not getting any additional resources to help them hold on to a, some sort of turn advantage, or to help make sure that they get to that turn advantage, um, it definitely hurts them so I think this is going to be a big uh, game changer for awakening decks I'm not surprised if we're gonna be seeing a lot of awakened decks once this patch hits I'm definitely excited to play awaken myself um, I've always been one of those players who've been intrigued by a lot of awakened stuff but again I don't run it because I understand how why it's failing at least in this time so I really am excited to jump back into awakening decks so Definitely, I approve of this change just to give them that additional draw power that's needed. Um, and again, I don't think it's going to be as big of a problem as Mystic Dojo were, uh, uh, was, excuse me, because again, there's no cost reduction on this one. So everything still pretty much remains about the same. Um, you just have to uh, make sure your units actually awaken for you to get the draw, which is very important. It's very different from Mystic Dojo, where the Dojo requires you just to place a trap down. And then those traps in your hand got reduced via the dojo cost reduction, and then you keep drawing. That was that's a mess. Um, so I think they've done a better job in prepping for a situation like that. So overall, again, very excited to see how Awakening uh, benefits, or you know, what they gain, or, or how they gain. I think I'm, I'm not making any sense here, <laughs> uh, but in a long-winded way, in my long-winded way. I think they are pretty much set to do a nice sort of, I guess, meta shift, if you will, um, thanks to this new draw engine. Now, the next buff I want to talk about, ha you know, can be debated on whether or not this is an actual buff, uh, but it does concern Tyrannosaur. Now, its stats have been reduced to 5-6, but of course it gains plus 2, plus 2 if you have another dinosaur on the board. Now, the developer has thrown in additional notes in this one saying, we want T-Rex to still have a massive stat line, but the utility of his fear is too good for a higher stat unit. The change will balance him more effectively when used for utility and make him stronger as a big bruiser for dinosaur decks. So right there, we get the intention, all right, Tyrannosaur needs to be more suited for dino-based decks, um, which means essentially... If you want him to be a bigger unit, you know, have that kind of 6-7 presence, you're going to be wanting to run additional dinosaurs, which I don't think will be a problem, um, especially for Warlocks, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. Um, but, again, Tyrannosaur, I think... He, I really think he gets more of a buff in this sense, because he is essentially becoming a bigger boy than what he was in, you know, today's ladder, or today's format, if you will. Um, Tyrannosaur is a 6-7, but with the plus 2, plus 2, you now have a 7-8, I believe. Um, and that could be from any sort of dinosaur on the board, from a dino rider to dino nest 
to another T-Rex. So that is something to take note of. T-Rexes will buff each other. They will help each other. Um, so if you are running more than one Tyrannosaur in your current deck, you might be okay. Again, you can always try this out when this patch releases. Uh, but having two T-Rexes on the board will, you know, they will buff each other uh, tremendously. So you'll have an even stronger pair uh, than what you have currently um, in today's format. So that is something to take note of. I think overall, a t uh, Tyrannosaurus can be considered to be getting more of a buff here. I know people might argue saying it's a nerf. They've, you know, slotted him more for dinosaur decks. But hey, dino decks are getting a push. They are, you know, receiving... Uh, not only Tyrannosaur, but another change, which again, I will mention in about, you know, a few minutes or so. So I think overall, Ty uh, Tyrannosaur has had a good change brought on to him. And I'm excited to see where Dinosaur's decks go as a result of this. Alright, so the next, you know, set of buffs I want to mention to you guys is the range improvement. Now I have scrolled down the rest of the list further so you can see some additional changes that I think you guys could probably only see. I think Winds of the Nord got cut off, I think, at the halfway point. So regardless, here are the rest of the changes if you guys haven't looked at them already. Um, but I am going to be talking about mainly range in this sort of excerpt of the video. Um, now, the developer has thrown in a note saying, Range units without utility have been underwhelming since the latest update. We're going to try reworking the formula to improve their stat line slightly, especially in the higher gold tiers. Now, that is something to take note of. Um, they have recognized that the range units have not really been doing too well. Um, since the Enchanted Grove launch, so now they're going to try and rework their stat lines to make them a bit scarier in their respective gold tiers. Now, obviously, we can see things like the Cannoneer being improved to a 5-6, uh, the Bender 3-4, the Gunner at 4-5. There's a lot of, you know, on site, there are a lot of scary range units that we got going around here. Um, and it is important to take note that a lot of these guys aren't going to be as easily removable as they once were. Uh, certain cards like Doomship and Darkbender can only be taken out directly by a blue firebolt now. Um, Wizard and Pyromancer can't be killed by a simple flamestorm usage. And the Cannoneer, you're going to need to put a little, ex a little excuse me, extra effort into getting rid of him since he does get an additional health boost being put at 5-6. Um, so right now, I don't think Ranger are going to be too heavily, you know, they're not going to be a huge concern. Um, obviously, they are going to take um, some action, I think, Primarily when the patch releases, um, especially with experiments, people are going to be playing around with all these range improvements. I'm not surprised I'm going to be seeing a lot of uh, Pirate Viking range decks. Um, so, yeah, I think they are, they are some, you know, it's a very good buff, I think, if, you know, to achieve what they're trying to do with them and to, you know, make them more usable, to get them out there more. Um, and especially Magmasaur. Magmasaur is definitely one that I do want to cover a bit separately from everyone else, but I'm going to finish up that little excerpt by, you know, overall stating that I think range will be initially scary, yes, uh, but I think they really shouldn't be too much of an issue, um, due to the fact that they do need that time to get set up. They do have the summon sickness still, so if you push down, if you kind of rush them with everything you got, uh, before big guys like the Gunner and the Cannoneer start to come out, then you will still put your opponent on the defensive, essentially rendering their deck useless. Alright, so now I do want to take uh, Magmasaur away from all the range units to explain his change a little bit more. I think Magmasaur is one of those cards that right now seems a, you know, like a dull change on paper, but you kind of have to look at it to really understand how much of a buff it actually got. Um, so Magmasaur has been cost reduced to about 2, and meanwhile his HP has been reduced to 1. That's pretty standard, you know, alright, it's now a 2-1 body on the board for 2 gold, that's range, but what's so special about it? What's special is that Magmasaur is rocking Explosive 3. Now, that is, you know, a bit... Some of you might be going, well, why is that important? Why might be, uh, you know, why should I care that he's got Explosive 3? Um, that's because with the way buildings are usually placed in the earlier phases of a game, this could mean that Magmasaur uh, provi you know, can provide you with solid building removal in Warlock without heavily relying on your burn spells. Um, now, Magmasaur has, you know, it is the other sort of card in conjunction with Tyrannosaur that I wanted to talk about um, in this sort of patch note review. 
because I think it is important to know that both of these dinosaurs are getting individual pushes, making dinosaur decks uh, you know that much more competitive in the ladder. Uh, by giving Magmasaur that cost reduction, you are giving him more of an opportunity to come out earlier and to mess around with your opponent's buildings. Um, obviously, Halter is going to be hurt by this, I think, um, due to the fact that Magmasaur can just blow it up if it's stationed right next to, the, next to or around the castle. Excuse me. Um, that explosive 3 will damage it, and if you place a guard unit anywhere near an altar for another unit per se, if you throw them up or, you know, in the top or bottom lanes, uh, the explosive 3 is still going to do massive damage, um, to the opponent's buildings and force your uh, opponent to make some weird positioning choices that they otherwise wouldn't when, you know, when not dealing with Magmasaur. Um, so I think this buff does give Warlocks one more option in terms of building removal that I think has been, again, lacking um, outside. I mean, let's be honest. Outside of Warlocks, building removal is a bit lackluster. Um, but again, giving, you know, building removal more, you know, like, you know, just more tools in general is also a good sign. So I think Magma Source change uh, will definitely fit that more building removal-esque type you know, role that I think not only dinosaur decks need, but, you know, a variety of other warlock decks that might not have it, or if they're, you know, you know, if they don't have certain burn cards or whatnot, if they're, you know, not drawing any burn cards, the Magmasaur, I think, is a good replacement for those burn spells. So, overall, a nice buff to give Magmasaur a kind of new role, in a sense. I think the last buff we're going to talk about in this initial patch note review is going to be Shodan now. Um, now, Shodan got a interesting change he's being brought up to eight uh hp rather than being at six for the moment i think that's something to take note of uh, i'm not going to harper too long on this change because i think you know his is kind of straightforward it's give away next a little more power but i just want to make people aware that shodan is getting that health buff so i think he's definitely going to be one of those cards that if you want to make work now is the time to do so his health is going to be in a weird spot at eight, uh, at eight. So definitely take advantage of that. Uh, not only in awakened decks, but other sort of ninja decks that you might want to uh, throw in Shodan for. If you're missing maybe a slot thanks to an altar free up or whatnot, um, Shodan definitely look at Shodan because I think he might be one of those cards that might see some problems. Because that HP, that eight HP, I think will cause some concern. I just want to bring people. You know, I want to. Put some awareness on that right now. I'm not going to harp too much on it because, again, it's sort of like a minor change, but just one that we should be aware of. And with that being said, folks, that's going to do it for this patch note review. Um, definitely excited to see how these changes will shape the, you know, soon to be meta. Um, definitely going to be seeing a lot of different, you know, uh, things happening in the. Uh, in the latter for sure i'm excited to see where things go excited to see where decks you know kind of take off at this point because there is again a lot of different uh changes that are going to create some sort of an impact whether big or small so again excited to see that happen um in terms of other content i want to also sort of make uh, an announcement regarding um two top or two kind of different videos um, I am going to hold off on Meta Monthly this month just to really get a shit. Because I think with these patch notes, I want to see maybe by the end of August if a um, if the meta will shape differently. So I am holding off on Meta Monthly uh, for a bit because I want to see if these patches really sometime this month to reshape the meta. Um, also regarding other content, I am going to be making a tier list video for all of these new car new changes basically highlighting you know some tier changes that i think are important um because there are other changes that i didn't go over as well in here that probably should have been highlighted uh but i'll probably go over those more in that tier list video so stay tuned for that uh to get really more of an idea of what i think about other changes uh, aside from the ones i mentioned in this video so with that being said guys if you enjoyed this video please give it a like share with your friends and of course comment down below your thoughts on this patch and if you guys are excited for this as much as i am also if you are you know while you're down there if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button to help show your support to the channel excuse me and help us grow all by clicking that subscribe button at no additional cost to you um with that being said guys uh that's all for me for now i'll throw a reddit link 
or excuse me, a link to the original Reddit post where you can view again these changes for yourselves and jump in on the conversation. And while you're down there, again, join Discord as well. Uh, a lot of us are discussing changes and how we think things are going to be impacted. So if you haven't joined Discord already, be sure to do that as well. Uh, so that being said, guys, that's all from me for now. So until next time, stay gaming.